Welcome to Math on Ice, June 2013 Integral Equations. There is one question from part B and one question from part C. The first question, the integral equation y of x is equal to x minus integral 1 to x, x into y of t dt. And we need to find the solution. So whenever we have an equation of this type, which is an ultra second kind equation, which is a non-homogeneous equation. If you have of this type, a to x, k of x comma t into y of t dt. We find the solution as y of x is equal to f of x plus lambda times of integral a to x resolve in kernel r of x comma t comma lambda into f of t dt where your resolve in kernel is given by summation n is equal to 0 to infinity lambda power n into k n plus 1 of x comma t and then k n plus 1 of x comma t is equal to integral t to x k of x comma z into k n of z comma t into d is it so we find one by one k of x comma t is given in the question which is equal to x and this is equal to k1 of x comma t and lambda is equal to minus 1 f of x is equal to x here so k2 of x comma t is equal to integral t to x k of x comma t which is k of x comma z is equal to x so this is k of x comma z and then we find k1 of z comma t into d is it so this will be integral t to x k of x comma z would be x here and k1 of uh, z comma t would be z into d z so this is equal to x outside z squared by 2 lower and the upper limit so we get k2 of x comma t is equal to x into x squared by 2 minus t squared by 2 which is equal to x by 2 outside x squared minus t squared and then we find k3 of x comma t is equal to integral t to x k of x comma z into k2 of z comma t into d z which is equal to integral t to x k of x comma z is x and k2 of z comma t would be z by 2 into z squared minus t squared into dz and you can take x by 2 outside and this is t to x z into z squared minus t squared into dz take z squared minus t squared is equal to some u we get du is equal to 2 z dz so z dz is equal to du divided by 2 so this is equal to x by 2 into integral t to x this would be z squared minus t squared is u and we get dz z z into dz is equal to du divided by 2 so we get this as x by 2 outside u squared by 2 here and already a 1 by 2 here so 1 by 2 and then we have the limit don't apply the limit here because we have changed the, in terms of z to in terms of u so x by 2 into u squared by 4 and t to x this limit is for z and now not for u so don't apply it for u we just convert this u to z, z squared minus t squared divided by 4 tx. Now apply the limit x by 2 into x squared minus t squared by 4. The whole squared is here. So u squared, u is z squared minus t squared, the whole squared. And this t squared, when you apply t, we get t squared minus t squared is equal to 0, obviously. So this is your upper limit. And when you apply the lower limit, you get it as 0. So this is equal to x by 2. This is k3 of x comma t is equal to x by 2 into um x squared minus t squared divided by 2 the whole square so similarly when we find k4 of x comma t which is equal to integral t to x k of x comma z would be x and this part is going to be z by 2 into z squared minus t squared divided by 2 the whole square into d is it so just take this x by 2 outside integral t to x we find z divided by 4 and this is z squared minus t squared the whole squared into d z take this z squared minus t squared is equal to u we get du is equal to 2 is a dz is a dz is equal to du divided by 2 so this is equal to x by 2 into 1 by 4 separate integral uh, t to x this limit is not for uh, u it is for z so for uh, time saving we just have the same limit and after changing u to the fun uh, function of z we just apply the limit so z by 4 z into dz has been converted to du by 2 so this is du by 2 into z squared minus t squared is u and this squared retains as it is so we have x by 2 into 1 divided by 4 2s are it is 8 and this can be u squared when you integrate you will find u cube by 3 don't apply the limit here just convert u in terms of z x by 2 into 1 by 8 into here when you change it it will be z squared minus t squared the whole cube divided by 3.
so we get it as x by 2 1 by 8 and now apply the lower and the upper limit when you apply the upper limit it is x squared minus t squared the whole cube divided by 3 and when you apply the lower limit this will become 0 so just rearrange and write x divided by 3 factorial 2 3s are 6 and this can be x squared minus t squared by 2 the whole cube so this is having a general uh, condition of this type k1 of x comma t we found it as x and k2 of x comma t is equal to we got it as k2 of x comma t is equal to x by 2 into x squared minus t squared x by 2 into x squared minus t squared and k3 of x comma t is equal to x by 2 x by 2 into x squared minus t squared here x squared minus t squared by 2 the whole square so and k4 of x comma t is equal to x by 3 factorial so you take this as 2 factorial and you have it as x squared minus t squared by 2 the whole cube so general condition we will have kn of x comma t which would be equal to x divided by n minus 1 factorial x squared minus t squared divided by 2 the whole power n minus 1 so k n plus 1 of x comma t would be x divided by n factorial into x squared minus t squared divided by 2 the whole power n so this is what a resolvent kernel x r comma t comma lambda r of x comma t comma lambda is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity we find lambda is equal to minus 1 from the given question right lambda is equal to minus 1 minus 1 the whole power n into k n of x k n plus 1 of x comma t which is equal to x divided by n factorial into x squared minus t squared by 2 the whole power n it has alternate positive negatives and you find this x is an independent term of uh, n so you can take it outside summation n is equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 the whole power n x squared minus t squared the whole power n uh, divided by n factorial into 2 power n so this is having alternate positive negative actually it is x outside completely so you find the first term which is uh, n is equal to 0 so it is 1 minus x squared minus t squared divided by 1 factorial into 2 divided into 2 and then the next term would be x squared minus t squared the whole square divided by 2 squared into some 2 factorial minus so on this is the exponential form e to the power of this full term that is x squared minus t squared divided by 2 this is your power and you find it as alternate positive negative so we find a negative here and this x multiply to this term so r of x comma t comma lambda resolvent kernel is equal to x into e to the power minus x squared minus t squared divided by 2 so this is otherwise written as r of x comma t comma lambda is equal to x into e to the power t squared minus x squared by 2 right so next we have to find the solution y of x is equal to f of x plus lambda integral a to x our a is 1 here in the question it is 1 to x and we have the resolvent kernel x into e to the power t squared minus x squared by 2 into f of x what is the f of x in the question x so we find x here and also here f of t so it will be 3t into dt so we get y of x is equal to x minus take out x 1 to x e to the power t squared minus x squared by 2 into t into dt now take t squared minus x squared by 2 is equal to u we get du is equal to 2t by 2 into dt which will give you t into dt is equal to du and uh, changing the limit we will have uh, as t is tending to 1 u will be tending to 1 minus x squared by 2 as t tends to x u tends to 0 so we get y of x is equal to x minus x into integral lower is 1 minus x squared by 2 and upper is 0 and this is equal to e to the power u into t into dt is du so we get y of x is equal to x minus x as it is so you can take out from both the x's we can take out the 1x common so we can have like this x outside 1 minus integral 1 minus x squared by 2 into 1 e to the power u into du so that will give you y of x is equal to x 1 minus e power u lower and the upper limits upper limit is 0 so y of x is equal to x 1 minus when you apply the upper limit it is e to the power 0 minus e power 1 minus x squared by 2 
when you apply the upper limit it is becoming e power 0 which is 1 so 1 minus 1 will give you 0 so this is x into e to the power 1 minus x squared by 2 so the correct answer is option 3 by 2 The question from part C for the homogeneous rhythm equation y of x is equal to lambda integral 0 to pi sin of x plus zeta y of zeta d zeta. So we will just find the solution out of this. Before moving on to the problem, we will just have the convenient form y of x is equal to lambda integral 0 to pi sin of x plus t into y of t dt. So here kernel k of x comma t is equal to sin x cos t plus cos x sin t so this is your alpha 1 beta 1 alpha 2 beta 2 now the eigenvalue lambda we don't know what it is and the corresponding eigenfunction y of x involving the arbitrary constants a and b are we have to find lambda and also the corresponding eigenfunctions we have to find the eigenvalue and the eigenfunction now here we can directly move to the problem as it is a predom integral equation we have y of x is equal to lambda times of integral 0 to pi this kernel can be elaborated as sin x cos t plus cos x sin t into y of t dt right so you can have into y of t dt so this is equal to lambda integral 0 to pi sin x cos t y of t dt plus lambda integral 0 to pi cos x sin t into y of t dt so this is equal to lambda can be taken outside sin x can be taken outside so 0 to pi cos t into y of t dt plus lambda take out cos x you will find sin t into y of t dt inside the integral i am going to take this part to be c1 and this part to be c2 this is our y of x so i'll have y of x is equal to lambda c1 sin x plus lambda c2 cos x where our c1 is equal to integral 0 to pi cos t into y of t dt and c2 is equal to integral 0 to pi sin t into y of t dt right so here as y of x is equal to this one we will find c1 is equal to integral we will find c1 first 0 to pi cos t into what is our y of t it is lambda c1 into sin t plus lambda c2 into cos t into dt which is equal to integral 0 to pi cos t lambda c1 can be taken outside into sin t into dt plus lambda c2 can be taken outside integral 0 to pi cos square t into dt now here as we know that integral 0 to pi cos mx into sin m nx is into dx is equal to 0 if m is equal to n so this part is going to be 0 so we get c1 is equal to lambda c2 into this is going to be 1 plus uh, cos cos squared t is equal to 1 plus cos 2 t divided by 2 into dt so this is equal to lambda c2 by 2 into this will be t lower and the upper limit and cos 2 t when you inter when you take the integration you will find it as sin 2 t divided by 2 sin 2 t divided by 2 and you take the lower and the upper limit 0 to pi when you apply lower and upper here it will be 0 completely so only this is going to exist you have lambda c2 by 2 into pi this is our c1 and similarly for c2 this is equal to c2 is equal to integral 0 to pi sin t into y of t dt right so integral 0 to pi sin t into y of t dt what is our y of t lambda c1 sin t lambda c1 sin t plus we get it lambda c2 cos t lambda c2 cos t into dt the first part is going to exist and the second part will become 0 so we get c2 is equal to integral 0 to pi lambda c1 taken outside sin squared t into dt so lambda c1 into integral 0 to pi 1 minus cos 2t divided by 2 into dt so this is also see lambda c1 only you will find y2 into pi so this is what your c2 is we got c1 and c2 from this we have to evaluate the value of lambda lambda what they have given in the options okay for the corresponding uh, lambda we have to find the corresponding eigen functions right
consider this matrix to be A matrix. So we get A is equal to this matrix. Find determinant of A, which is 4 minus lambda square pi square equated to 0. We get lambda. Lambda square pi square is equal to 4. That implies lambda square is equal to 4 by pi square. That implies lambda is equal to plus or minus 2 by pi. Okay. So we will move by option by option. First option is given to be lambda is equal to 2 by pi means. Then we have to find the Aiken function, which is equal to A times of sin x minus cos x. So now we know y of x is equal to lambda c1 sin x plus lambda c2 cos x. So here y of x is equal to lambda c1 sin x plus lambda c2 cos x. What about c1? c1 is equal to lambda c2 pi by 2. Lambda c2 pi by 2 and c2 is equal to lambda c1 pi by 2. So it is lambda c1 pi by 2. From option A, lambda is equal to 2 by pi, right? So, we get C1 is equal to lambda into, okay, we'll substitute for lambda. Lambda is equal to 2 by pi into C2 into pi the whole by 2. So, we get 2 to cancel, pi pi cancel. So, that implies C1 is equal to C2. Now, we get Y of X is equal to, lambda is actually 2 by pi, right? 2 by pi into C1 sin X plus 2 by pi into uh, C2 can be written as C1 cos x. So, I can take out 2 by pi C1 sin x plus cos x. So, what happens? Let me take this 2 by pi C1 as A. So, A into sin x plus cos x. This is our Eigen function. Are we getting this? A into sin x plus cos x. We should have A, A, A sin plus here. It is having negative. So, this option must be wrong. When lambda is equal to 2 by pi, we must derive it sin x plus cos x. So, option 4 is true. Now, what about the second option when lambda is equal to minus 2 by pi? So, we will go for option B. Lambda is equal to minus 2 by pi. C1 is equal to minus 2 by pi C2 into pi divided by 2. So, pi pi cancels, 2, 2 cancels. We get C1 is equal to minus C2. Therefore, the corresponding Eigen function y of x is equal to minus 2 by pi into what is that C1? C1 let it be C1 sin x and then plus 2 by pi C2. C1 here C2 will be here. So this would be the function. So lambda C1 sin x plus lambda C2 cos x. So C2 is actually minus C1, right? So here we get minus C1. And then lambda is equal to minus 2 by pi. Here it is minus 2 by pi. Lambda is equal to minus 2 by pi minus C1 and cos x here. So that is equal to minus 2 by pi C1 sin x plus 2 by pi C1 into cos x. So, when you take out minus 2 by pi c1 outside, we get sin x minus cos x. You consider this to be b. So, this will be equal to b times of sin x minus cos x. So, when lambda is equal to minus 2 by pi, we have to arrive at the Eigen function b into sin x minus cos x. Are we getting that? Sin x minus cos x. That is an option 3. So, option 2 is wrong. 3 and 4 are correct answers.